So tonight we're here to talk about science. And in particular, space science, an area that I've spent a lot of time in. And also going to talk to you about rocks, in particular, space rocks. And I hope, by the end of my 10 minutes, you'll agree with me that space rocks. <laughs> so 210 years ago, this was our neighborhood in the solar system. Sun in the middle, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter up here near the top. And on New Year's Day, on 1801, we discovered what we thought was another planet, Ceres. And Ceres, as we know now, is the very first asteroid. About a year and a half later, found another one, Pallas. And in about 1804, added one called Juno. And the hits keep on coming. We added uh, four Vesta in 1807. So in uh, just a short period of six years, the number of bodies in our solar system had just about doubled. So fast forward about 100 years to the end of the 19th century, 1898 or so, this was our solar system. And we found the first near-Earth asteroid, and we named it Eros, and it was the 433rd asteroid that we had discovered at that time. So now we're going to come to present day. Actually, this is about 20 years ago, and this is our neighborhood. And what you see, that big cloud, is the main belt. The main belt are the asteroids between Mars and Jupiter, which is out here. And there's our old friends Pallas and Juno and Vesta and Ceres and here comes Jupiter. Hey, hey, there's Saturn. And what you see, if you follow the Earth, is these white lines coming out. And every one of those white dots is the birth of a new asteroid, or at least us finding out about it. It's been there for quite a while. And every, every year we add a few more, and as you see, our neighborhood is getting kind of crowded. In fact, it's practically a traffic jam there around the Earth. And we continue to find more and more asteroids. And you see how they kind of pulse every so often. You'll notice it's about 12 pulses a year. And that's because it's hard to find new asteroids when there's a full moon. And we've taken this to space and found many asteroids in space. And this is what our neighborhood looks like today, a half a million asteroids, and almost 10,000 of them that are near the Earth. So let's talk about those space rocks. So here's one of them. This is an HD, HED meteorite, in particular, a eucrite. And there happens to be a gentleman that I met uh, in intermission who can tell you all about eucrites. He studies them at the University of Washington. And eucrites, it is believed, come from that asteroid Vesta. And here is our friend Vesta. N series, the very first asteroid discovered. Everyone knows about the moon, Mercury, Mars, and I think we all know where this is. And these are all these objects to scale in our solar system. So let's take a closer look at Vesta. So Vesta, we happen to know an awful lot about it because NASA has a satellite in orbit around Vesta. And it's taken a lot of data and created this wonderful animation. We can see the different areas on Vesta, the crater impacts, the ridges, the polar regions. And on this plot, the colors that you see, the yellow actually represents areas that are high in iron. And uh, the press release from NASA says that they're actually still trying to figure out what the red means. So this is part about science. We don't actually know it all yet, and it's all about discovery. And as you see, as it rotates up, we're looking at the South Pole. And this whole area here represents the impact that happened sometime in the last billion years that kicked off that little rock that made a journey halfway across the solar system and landed back here on Earth. But Vesta is an interesting and big asteroid, but there are others. Up in the right-hand corner here is, looks like a smaller asteroid. This one is 21 Lutetia. And the Europeans flew by this asteroid with their spaceship Rosetta. So let's take a closer look at Lutetia. And it has lots of friends, too. 
Lutetia is really big. Not as big as Vesta, not as big as Ceres, but if you laid Lutetia down at the front door here, you would get all the way up to where Pinky works in Bellingham. So a very large rock. So the very first asteroid that we saw up close is 951 Gaspera. Galo Galileo went, back, went by that only 21 years ago. We hadn't actually seen an asteroid up close and personal until we went whizzing by it on the way to Jupiter. And Galileo picked up Ida, this one here, and with Ida we found that it had a moon, a little guy named Dactyl. And uh, Dactyl would go from here to the end of the runway. It's small, but not that small. We actually sent a dedicated mission to go and orbit Eros. Uh, that was the near mission, and it picked up Matilda. And to kind of put all these asteroids in scale and other things you might be familiar with, there's the Death Star 2. <laughs> it's about 130 kilometers or so. So now I'm going to focus in on this little itty bitty guy right here, 25143 Itakawa. And Itakawa is a mission uh, that the Japanese uh, explored, the Hayabusa mission. And Hayabusa uh, went and explored this uh, asteroid and returned samples from it. And that's about how big Itakawa is. It's about 500 meters wide, about 200 meters tall. The Space Needle here in Seattle is about 184 meters, so you can imagine this rock would probably fill up the parking lot. And these are just fascinating places. This is an animation as uh, uh, Hayabusa was off of uh, the side of uh, uh, Itakawa, and you can just see all the interesting shadows and rocks and areas and things are going on there. And when we got really close to Itakawa, this is what we saw. Uh, for scale, this is a little bit shorter than I am, so this would be about the size of your car. And this is really the most highest resolution data that we have on asteroids right now. If we kind of take a step back and look at other ways that we learn about asteroids, we just actually learned about one two days ago that went whizzing by the Earth with radar. And with radar, we can make models of asteroids, and we can learn interesting things about how they rotate. This is another asteroid, 1999 KW4, that has its own moon. So the next thing short of radar, if you don't have a radar, you can use a spectroscope and take a spectra of the light coming off an asteroid. And this is a particularly special and to this day unique asteroid, 2008 TC3, discovered on a Sunday night, and the news said that it was going to hit Sudan Monday morning. There was a scramble because it was really good that it wasn't a big one. So this is the case where we actually saw this thing in space uh, before it landed on Earth and then went out in Sudan and picked up pieces of it. And we can now, in science, connect those two data sets and understand how to relate those things that we're seeing in space. Another, another special asteroid, to me at least, is uh, my favorite, 13609 Lewicki. It's out in the uh, main belt, five kilometer asteroid. And here's a case where if we just watch the magnitude and the brightness of the light coming in off the asteroid, we learn how it spins. We learn a little bit about its shape. And Ralph Megna at the Center for Solar System Studies uh, learned that this asteroid has a period that in about a half a day it makes a complete rotation. And if you don't have this much information about the asteroid, all of them really start out as just a point of light in the sky. And here is 2010 AL30 as it was flying by Earth uh, January about two years ago. So asteroids are interesting to my company because there's many useful things on them. We have hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, other volatile materials that are useful for all sorts of interesting applications in space. If you want to start building structures in space, there are interesting things like iron and nickel and cobalt. And you can do lots of great things with iron and nickel and cobalt, especially if you don't have to drag them in, into space. And of course, everyone gets really excited when you start talking about the platinum group metals. And uh, because of the formation of asteroids and the way that they have come to exist, uh, the platinum group metals are especially concentrated in some asteroids, and they have a lot of interesting uses. And imagine if we had as much as we wanted of these very special and unique elements and the, the new things that would be enabled by having an abundance of them. And imagine what we would be able to do in space if we had an unlimited amount of resources to further the exploration of space. Maybe one day we'd do things like this use asteroids as the ability to make new places to live and work in space and to power the economy to explore further areas of space, get to Mars uh, and beyond, and permanently set up the solar system. 
So I hope you agree with me that space rocks. Thank you.